we're going to talk about two different ways of charging an object by contact and by induction. So charging an object by contact. So in this example we're going to be charging this metal sphere that's on an insulated stand. So no charge can bleed down uh, from the sphere. If we take a, a negatively charged ebonite rod, for example, and we touch the metal sphere, then some of, that, uh, some of those excess electro electrons on the ebonite rod will bleed over onto the sphere. And then once that rod is removed, then those uh, electrons will spread around the outside because they're repelling each other. They don't want to all be in the same place, so they'll spread over the surface of that uh, sphere. And at the end of the day, the metal sphere has the same, uh, has charge of the same sign, meaning negative, as the charged object that you touched it with. Um, if, the, if we'd used a glass rod or a lucite rod, and it would have been positively charged when you touched the sphere, then the sphere would have been positively charged. Okay, so uh, talk about the process of charging a metal object by induction. And we'll show a video showing how this, uh, how this works. But just to show it in diagrams so you can understand how it works. This time, we're going to take that same ebonite rod, but we're not going to touch the sphere. Instead, we'll bring it close enough so that the electrons in the rod will push the electrons in the sphere, the portion of the sphere that's closest to the rod. The electrons will repel, the electrons in the rod will repel those electrons in the sphere and push them over onto the far side of the sphere. That will leave uh, some atoms with, with nuclei that, that have been stripped of some of their electrons, leaving this portion of the sphere uh, positively charged. The next step in charging by induction is to ground the side of the sphere that's opposite to the nearby uh, charged object. So here's the side that's closest to the charged object. Here's the side that's opposite to it. We're going to ground that side. And what it means to ground is just simply to connect this, uh, to, to attach a wire, to solder a wire to it, and run a wire to the ground, D dig it into the ground. Uh, the ground wire in your house is just an electrical wire that runs deep into the ground. And what that does is the earth is a huge object and it can absorb any extra charge that you have. And so that extra charge on this side gets absorbed over here. So the negative charges, that it, the electrons that have accumulated on the far side, have then gone into the ground. And then you remove the uh, charging uh, rod and you're left with some positive charge. So you've less, lost some electrons and they spread out uniformly. And at the end of the day, what you've done is, is you've got an object that's charged positively now, the opposite of the charging object. So that's what this sentence means. After the process is complete, the charges on the object have opposite signs, meaning the metal sphere has charges of the opposite sign um, to if, if the one is positive to the charging object. If the one is positive, the other is negative, et cetera. Okay, so a demonstration. This is just basically doing exactly the same thing, but doing the experiment. Okay, we're going to charge this metal sphere by contact. I'm going to charge up the ebonite rod by rubbing some electrons off of the fur and onto the rod. Try and get quite a good number of electrons on here. Then transfer them to the sphere. And verify that we've done the transfer by measuring it with the Braun electroscope. Work like a charm. And there's another way of charging, and it's by induction. So let me, uh, let me neutralize this guy. Charge this up again, but, but we're going to transfer some charge to the sphere, not by contact, but by induction now. Uh, 
I'm going to bring this up close and then touch the other side and then bring it away and verify that we've transferred some charge. So I never touched this negative rod to this metal sphere. How did it get charged? The answer is this uh, rod being charged negatively repelled the electrons on the sphere that, that were closest to the rod. So the electrons got pushed over to the other side, leaving some positive charge uh, attracted to the negative rod. And when I touched the opposite side, the place where the electrons got pushed with my finger, it allowed those negative charges to bleed off of the sphere, leaving the, char the sphere positively charged when I removed the, the ebonite rod. And so we ended up instead with a positive charge rather than before when we charged by contact, we ended, uh, I'm sorry, we ended up with a positively charged sphere um, and we're able to accomplish that with a negatively charged rod. That's charging by induction. Static cling that you see in your um, clothes that come out of the dryer, uh, anything when, you're, when, it's a, when it's a dry day, you can get static cling. The way that works is if you don't have a conductor, but you say have, you have a shirt, which is, uh, is, which is an insulator, anything with a, <clears throat> if you bring up a, a charged object close to an insulator, then what happens is that in an insulator, the electrons aren't able to move around. But what they do is that the, the atoms that have electrons bound to them, the electrons go, are, are, are repelled by this negative charge here. So the electrons in the atoms themselves get pushed over on one side of the atoms, leaving the uh, core nuclei exposed on the, on the surface. So this creates a surface that's positively charged, and that positively charged surface actually attracts the negative rod, and that's what's responsible for a static clean.